This is the top video game podcast of the week from HorribleNight.com. Coming at you live on Thursday, September 19th, 2013 from Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. We've got a trio this evening. Um, I, I think I'm ready for it. Starting with Aaron McNeil. Hey, the top in top video game is also for top hats, right? Yeah, and that's why it's on top. It's like the hat for the rest it's of the on, logo. It's a top hat. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> and Cole Monroe, nice what's going on, buddy? I have no idea what that was just about. I feel I suddenly feel underdressed. <laughs> but we gotta wear ties. Oh God, we've got ties as our like. Oh, we fancy tags. now. <laughs> we fancy. <laughs> uh, this is the interactive podcast from HorribleNight.com, where we ask uh, our questions to the community every week uh, for your best and worst of the week in gaming. But before we get to ours. Um, let's get caught up because Aaron, you've got a controversial topic on your, on your notes here. Um, what's on your mind? Oh, controversial. iOS 7's controversial? Eh, it's just ugly. That's, I don't think there's really controversy <laughs> with it. Yeah, so my wife and I were rushing to put iOS 7 on our iPhones yesterday and she beat me. I don't know how that happened. I was at work and I was having all sorts of issues just <laughs> getting it. I thought there was like a download race in your living room. Yeah, we Go! were shoving each other, and we we're sitting in race car beds, running around the house. But <laughs> <laughs> running around the house. I want a race car. But bed. yeah, she got it first, and she started giving me her impressions of it, and she was like, "It's so bright. I don't know what to think of this. Let me know when you get it." And I'm like, "It's gonna be another thirty minutes." And then two hours later, I finally had it. <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, yeah, that that's pretty bright." I don't know. It does some things that I'm familiar with after having an Android phone. Yeah. But it, it's it's a weird amalgamation of uh, tech stuff going on in iOS 7. That was its code name for a while, I think. Yeah, um, amalgamation. Weird amalgamation of tech stuff. <laughs> People didn't know what they were talking about. I don't know. I, there's stuff I like. There's other stuff that I'm kind of whatever about. But I've That's seen a bold some people, stance. Uh, it is a bold stance. I feel I've the same seen way. Though. Some people <laughs> very unhappy. A lot with, of un- uh, people. A the, lot of unhappy people on the internet this week. But it's like yeah, it was. Uh, That's a thing to do on the internet. Is yeah. be unhappy. Yeah, it's the right place to go. We should make a hat. Whatever, happened, a... About, whatever happened about just bitching about movies and watching pornography? <laughs> Moviepoopshoot.com <laughs> had it all. And that lost. Do people it all. bitch about pornography? <laughs> I'm, sure the I'm sure there is a sector on the internet that people don't like how some pornography is One of those highly critical <laughs> I, pornography forums. I hate the cameras they use in pornography these days. Yeah. It's a little... But, uh, yeah, the funniest thing, I guess, with iOS 7 was my wife getting on her Facebook to tell me, there's a person on here saying, iOS 7 is the worst thing to happen to my phone since ever, or something like oh. that. And I was like... These are the problems we have in America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> While other people suffer every day, my damn smartphone's operating system. Oh, I can't I was, right. when, I was just upset when my Nokia, Nokia uh, couldn't play Snake anymore. That's a good point. I missed my calculator, so, whatever those things were. I saw a. Uh, TI 83? Yeah, yeah I, saw, this instrument. I saw somebody like draw like a badass helmet from Fallout 3 on their TI 83 this week. That was I did see cool. that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I still have my TI. Play some Drug Wars. Um, drug Wars. Some, uh, oh, that's, Snake. that's a good one, too. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Was there a third yeah, game? I'm, yeah, there was a third. Tetris. Oh, <laughs> you just turn the calculator upside down and you type boobies. Yes, that's a classic. That was the third game. Well done. Um, yeah, I um, actually walked in the office today and was annoyed that I hadn't gotten the update for my iPad. And then I realized... Um, and after everyone telling me, I realized uh, the the update doesn't actually go through the app store; it's in the settings. And I could have gotten it like 24 hours earlier, but um, yeah, yeah, whatever. It was um, it was funny to see people get riled up about that stupid thing. So, <laughs> Cole, what riled you up? Um, well, <laughs> not well iOS 7 was a fun thing to experience at work when they, that's all everybody was doing and or talking about not working, so that was great. Um, but I read this graphic novel called Old Man Logan. Oh, shit. Uh, I thought, like, never mind. I was expecting, like, 
references to weird Hugh Jackman photos, but keep going. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, and it's a, uh, I can't remember who wrote it, but it's just a, I think it was like a seven, seven issue series of Wolverine, like 50 years after um, like current time or whatever. Okay. It's one of the best fucking stories I've ever read. <laughs> Like there was a part in the book where I just I set it down because I was just like caught, like thinking about what had just happened, mm-hmm. and that's that's really rare for me in a in any kind of story situation where I stop. But I was just like like the, the power of the moment was just so great. Interesting. And uh, I had was to put it, it down. Sunset? Just it. <laughs> what <laughs> was it? Sunset when you did that? Like you stopped and you stared into the sun. You're like, Damn. yeah, I did. I had to. Damn, <laughs> the desert sun. I've never spent i never spent a whole lot of time thinking about a graphic novel before. Uh, after I've after I finished it, and this one has has me thinking about it a lot. Um, so I definitely I don't want to say anything more really. Um, so I just it, want everybody to experience. Is it. it a graphic novel or is it a book? I mean, it was a it's a trade paperback. The one I read, like I, I read the compilation of all the issues that were released. So it's, I think it was just a regular like, um, regular run in Wolverine, mm-hmm. um, but like seven issues or eight issues or something like that. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. But definitely check it out. Yeah, it's like, it's really good. Like, there's one, there's one like image in the book that's well, there's more than one image in the book that's like, could be iconic, but there's one where he looks like. Pretty much like Clint Eastwood, but he has claws out. It's, <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Is he holding a stogie on one of his claws? Like, I don't, I don't know if he has a stogie or not. <laughs> That's but the world, the world, the world that it, that it, uh, he inhabits fifty years after, like everything we know. Gotcha. Everything we know is really interesting. Huh? Yeah, that would that would that would pull me in. Very cool. And it makes me want to. And it makes you want to like know like all of the backstory, what's going on in the world. And I always love books that do that. So check it out. All right, you convinced me to check out a book. That doesn't happen every day. Yeah. Well, it's got uh, a lot of pictures and not a whole lot of words. But now you're talking my language. I can read pictures all day long. <laughs> um, I went to uh, see Queens of the Stone Age this week for, I think, the third time. Um the only reason I bring this up is it's the first time I've seen a concert. It's probably the first concert in like the last five or six that I've been to that is a of a band that like I know all of their music because I've been going to concerts of like new bands or new bands to me where you only know like three or four of the songs and I kind of forgot what it was like to just like know the entire set list and be excited for every single song and um, just the difference between going to see a band that you like are really into versus one you're trying to get into. And uh, I think I prefer the I prefer to spend my money on the the bands that I'm really into. So That makes sense. <laughs> but <laughs> for some reason like in, in Indianapolis doesn't get you know, when we get the big bigger bands or bigger name bands, um, you know, it's kind of a big deal in the city. But uh, Queens of Stone Age and Sigaros, I forgot how to say their name. Um, we're in town on the same night, which is just really, really strange for us. So, um, I did have some debates at work at whether or not the, the fan base for those really cross over and whether it should have been a big deal. I was like, well, I wanted to see both. So I had to pick one, but anyway, crazy stone age. They're still making albums. It's good stuff. Did they have an opening? Like an opening act? Yeah. A band called guards. So we got there at the end. Um, I also saw it in. Um, a theater with stadium seating. Um, usually, I'm on the I'm like, you know, in a big amphitheater or that that type of thing. But this was just like indoors, kind of smaller theater. Uh, really cool. So we were up in the balcony, and the balcony was like swaying, and that was kind of cool because it's an old building. Um, we're like, well, you know, if I gotta if I gotta go out in a concert, this is this, this feels pretty good. So you can die crushing a bunch of other fans. Yeah. Uh, game of the week time, moving on to video games. Um, hmm, who do I want to start with here? Aaron, let's get it out of the way. Let's get it out of the way. You uh, are... Get me out of the way. Yeah. Because <laughs> we got to uh, pretend we're super negative against this game, because that, get, that gets, <laughs> gets us hits and, and stuff. 
So this this dumb little game came out <laughs> right after the Amazing Saints Row Four, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah, uh, I kind of like it so far, <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's like they it feels like Grand Theft Auto Four, but yet it feels less serious than that game. Well, they dropped the I from and, the title, so yeah, <laughs> they dropped the I and just left the V. And the V is for violence. <laughs> because some stuff has happened, and I've only been playing for maybe three real consecutive hours. Mm-hmm. But I have said damn a few times, and I'm kind of taken aback, and yet some people might say, but Aaron, you know, this is Grand Theft Auto. You shoot people in this game all the time. Nothing should be surprising, and yet I'm still like, whoa. <laughs> Let's calm down a little bit. What did I'm, that guy do to deserve this? I'm curious because... You like you said you kind of binged your way through Saints Row Four along with a few of the a few of the rest of us, and I don't know you, you get those superpowers in Saints Row Four and it's all of a sudden yeah. traversing an open world does not seem as fun um, like if you had to do it without those superpowers. So what was was the transition from that game difficult at all for you? <laughs> These are two different beasts. Okay. Yeah. So Grand Theft Auto uh, Grand Theft Auto Four. Yeah. Auto is in the title. You're still getting in cars and on bikes, whereas in Saints Row, I only ever dove into a car to knock someone else out of the car before getting back out of that car <laughs> and flying away. <laughs> and getting used to a bunch of cars obeying the laws of traffic. No. Just there's tons of people everywhere, and I'm like, I want to get from point A to point B. Every now and then, I find myself obeying traffic laws just to realize. I can drive on the sidewalk, but I kind of feel like I'm a douchebag if I do so because there are like five people on that sidewalk in my way. You, hey, you might get a hay card. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> and someone might leave a note on my windshield of that car I stole. So, you know, it's not my car. I can just abandon it. But <laughs> I'm I'm having some trouble adjusting. Yet I'm still having fun with it, but I'm crashing into other cars and people are going driver. off. And everyone is prepared to call me an asshole as soon as I make one transgression against them on the road. Like, I'll pass someone by going on the sidewalk, and a dude will be like, you fucking asshole! And I'm like, I sound... See, that sounds more like Liberty City to me. Like, that sounds like more like it'd be an East Coast city. That doesn't sound right. I'm not very authentic there, Rockstar. Do your homework. Everyone... Everyone's got asshole on the tip of their tongue, which is a weird thing to say in general. (laughs) Not in L.A. It's totally normal in L.A. to say it. They're all ready to say it, but other than that, uh, everyone's got an asshole on the tip of the <laughs> That sounds like a I mean, wait, wait. city. One word, one word changes the whole sentence. It, it changes the whole sentence, or does it? But uh, the story is really compelling. I like being three different characters. That makes it more interesting. And I mean, Grand Theft Auto Four, you could call a taxi and go to where you need to go. But something's more entertaining about just saying, "I want to be the other guy," and finding out he's you know a few blocks away buying weed. <laughs> you caught him in the middle of buying weed. That's right. cool. Time to take or, over. Or uh, he's stuck in traffic. Did or you? he's just staring. There was a guy staring up into the sunset, and I was like, I caught him in a really poignant moment. What and then made him jump into the water. What was your take on Grand Theft Auto 4? Because that's essentially why I'm not playing 5. I was excited when I first started playing it. And by the end, I was not as excited okay. <laughs> for the vanilla story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nico is okay, and but I don't know. There's something about, and people have brought this up before, his reluctance to do things, but doing them anyway. Oh yeah, he just doesn't seem like a very. He doesn't like make his own decisions. It feels like he's like, oh, I I come to this country and you, you all of you guys are jerks and you want me to go do your stuff for you. And then the mission thing pops up. Now go do this thing for that guy. I'm it, like, hey, you can't say no. Yeah. Your friends are always calling yeah. you. Let's play darts. It's It was a very annoying, you're, you're the main character, but you kind of feel like you're just a part of everyone else's lives, essentially. Cole, um, did you read any Grand Theft Auto V reviews? Anything stand out? Change um, your opinion? I, did, I didn't really read anything. Um, I, was, I was looking to see, like, what um, what it got and it seemed like pretty positive throughout. Um, everybody seemed to really like it, but I did watch a video review right before we came on here from Polygon, and I didn't realize like the swap mechanic seems pretty interesting to mm-hmm. me. Uh, how so. does that how does that work? Aaron? 
So in a mission with two uh, two or more of the main characters, you can hold down on the D-pad if you're I'm playing on 360, and you can immediately switch to the most relative uh, character, the most relevant character. Oh. And like so, if this guy's in like in cover and he's like in the middle of a firefight, you can switch to him if one of your guys is like way back, kind of out of the action. But in the open world, just you know, goofing around, you kind of get a little bit of a load time, but it's pretty stylized. And so you can wind up kind of just panning up bird's eye view on uh, the San Andreas area, the Los Santos, whatever the hell you call this place, and uh, you'll see all the the buildings and all the roads. It'll kind of tint it a different color, and then you'll shoot across to wherever the other guy is and kind of zoom back down into his life. And I find That's that just cool. – it's pretty interesting that way. And a couple of times I've only been a few blocks away, and I'm like, my uh, my other character's just like down the street. It's kind of <laughs> weird. And then like the guy I switched from would then text that guy and go, hey, you know you need to work on your shooting. Go to a shooting range. And I'm like, it's kind of funny. I was just in control of this guy, and all of a sudden I leave him, and he's like texting me saying, here's what you should go do. That's – but. I should switch That's back. Strange. And I, it'd be funny if I could switch back and forth and have them text each other. Like, you know, how about you <laughs> go do this fucking thing? Do you, does, like, when, um, like, say you're in the middle of a firefight or you're sniping in a helicopter and the other guy's, you know, driving the helicopter or whatever, does the AI then take over once you swap out? Yeah, the AI will take over, and I haven't done too many of those kinds of missions, but I've heard word on the street is that the AI is pretty good at okay. handling where you left off. So, yeah, I mean, I thought that was interesting, and maybe down the road, if I do yeah. do okay. some more reading and it comes out on PC, I might end up purchasing it, but like, I'm still kind of hesitant right now. It's it's still a Grand Theft Auto game. I mean, if you felt kind of, you know, ill from pay, playing 4, 5's probably not going to persuade you back over to being, like, Grand Theft Auto was the winning open world game I've been waiting for all my life. Yeah. But I think for the... This generation of consoles, it it does a lot. It's fun still to me. Uh, I think it's I, worth trying out. I think I'll eventually play it. Um, I definitely need a break bef- from Saints Row Four before I jump in, and I'll probably jump in just to do the heist stuff. That stuff sounds really interesting, and um, um, you know, just kind of more or less check it out as a technical achievement too, because that's what like the reviews yeah. I read. Like everybody said, it was great, but it, they weren't like touting it as the like most awesome thing to happen to video games either like and they all had some criticisms but nothing that would like de- overall just detract from it so um it's definitely you know it made a lot of money this week what was that 800 million dollars sure did um yeah <laughs> on day one or something and um so it is a phenomenon you got to kind of pay attention to and it's interesting to watch whether even if you're not playing the game so uh keep us posted on your GTA stories. Um, I want to know more about the I game. I certainly will. <laughs> but Coleman, let's go to the complete opposite end of the video game spectrum to talk about your game of the week. Sure. Uh, I think Josh talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, my game is Gone Home, the uh, point-and-click adventure game that came out. <laughs> is it point-and-click? I guess. Is it point-and-click? Well, you point and you click, yes. So, <laughs> but I mean, you navigate like like first person though. Yeah, like you're it's not point click. Okay. Yeah, you, you're you're uh, you got your WASD going okay. as well. Um, so yeah, mouse and keyboard controls actually, but you're you're clicking a lot. Um, you know, finished it in one sitting, and Josh, what Josh had to say was it was pretty dead on. Like, talk about a like super engaging story. Just from like reading letters and voiceover and listening to voiceovers in a game, it's really. I was really impressed by how well the story like was conveyed. Um, it didn't feel like there were any parts where it dragged or, um, or I never felt like lost in, in, lost in any way, um, or had any challenge like opening up the next room or or whatever. I just. Uh, I mean, I again, like it's one of those things that got me thinking after I was done with it. Um, just <laughs> back to the just sunset. how well the story was told. Yeah, back staring off into the sunset. <laughs> Think about man, gone home, and it's cool. Like, uh, it's, it, and, it, and it tugs on the nostalgia strings pretty hard too, since it takes place like in the mid '90s, and you see like X Files, VHS tapes, and 
and stuff like that. So laser disc players. And, oh, I just thought the people that I went think, there were old, and that's all they had. <laughs> they didn't want to learn DVDs. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it takes place in the nineties. Um, I, I think everybody should play it. Um, it's it's definitely it's definitely worth um, the time. Twenty dollars might be a little steep, but it's definitely worth the time. Yeah, I mean, everybody just seems really moved by this game. It really surprised me, um, especially kind of find out what it was. Because honestly, when it came out, I was like, "Oh, another horror game I haven't heard 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 from." And um, I don't know if I'm going to give this one a shot. And then it just turns out to be just something completely different. And um, yeah, everyone I've talked to and everybody I've heard talk about the game is just super into the story and. I don't know. It, it reached people I didn't expect it to reach. I mean, Cole. I mean, this seems to ha- probably has a lot of uh, pop culture references that really hit home with you for sure. sure. Um, but yeah, just uh, just praise across the board for Gone Home, and it. it uh, I'm gonna have to check it out. But uh, yeah, I think I think for you in particular, and a lot of people, like just without saying anything, just you need to experience yeah. the story by yourself. But like, it it takes you back to a point in your life where you have maybe some of these same like feelings and stuff, and so I think that's why it's so um, engrossing to people is like they can see themselves like male or female doesn't matter see themselves like in the character or, or yeah. experiencing some of the same yeah. emotional issues too. So uh, it's just so it's really well done. Really well done. Because a lot of it centers around like the the girl and the family, and uh, but like, mm-hmm. you know, it it has not been gender specific for who connects with this game, so that's 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 kind of cool. Um, it's definitely yeah. I'm glad this game keeps kind of popping up because I think more people should check it out. So says the guy who hasn't played it, but you got my back on that. So, um, I oh man, <laughs> I don't really know what to say about my game of the week, but it bears mentioning because. It was the perfect um, type of game to jump to after my horror marathon. Um, but uh, I got picked up the wonderful 101 on the Wii U. Uh, first of all, this was the game... I ha- this is my third downloaded game on the Wii U. Um, so my hard drive was full. So I've got to get a... <laughs> oh, jeez. So I ended up deleting Monster Hunter for now because I haven't really gotten into it. But I'm going to have to get an external hard drive to... Uh, handle these downloads because I don't know, that's just a really nice thing. I've, I've really appreciated on the 3ds as well that Nintendo's weird Sunday releases or like they don't always release them on the same day as everybody else that I can just pick those up on the, on the eShop. But, um, I like that too. Uh, anyway, the wonderful one one great style, great music. Cannot, uh, cannot say enough about the music cause it just plays into the whole superhero, um, power Rangers vibe that this thing has going for it. Um, it's a pl- game from Platinum Games. It is weird as hell to play. Um, and after two hours with the game, I'm still not really sure how to play it. But I, I, I <laughs> like what it's selling. Like it's it. I'm it's just different and um, stands out enough in my library that I'll I'll probably keep playing it. Um, not a game I could recommend to everybody. Um, but I was just I don't know. Like I said, coming off those just horror games that just kind of just messed with my head and put me in a dark place and this was just kind of silly and nonsensical and but at the same time as you start to see the mechanics unfold um uh, it, it could it could evolve into something uh, fun to play and interesting so um essentially you play as a, a group of superheroes that can recruit um members of the community, I guess, <laughs> to join your wonderful 100, um, or the wonder, what is it? The wonderful, uh, one double O what they call yeah. it. Uh, good voice acting in it too. Just over the top stuff. But, um, and you are, you, the player are the one Oh one. So you just kind of, there's always like a, a main hero that you're controlling. And then, um, there's just a mass of other heroes around you, um, that you control kind of Pikmin style. Um, by directing them with the the right analog stick and then just using buttons to tell them to attack and that sort of thing. Um, and just fighting, like, so far I've just fought, like, it's like an alien invasion with robots and just fighting giant enemies with your super, your group of su- groups of superheroes. Um, 
the way it's been used in the Wii Pad so far is you can draw gestures to uh, initiate like kind of super moves. Like I draw a circle and it activates the the glove power, or you draw a straight line and it activates a sword power. That basically all of your your group of superheroes they form that that weapon. So you just form like a giant glove or a giant sword. Um, when you draw one, um, there's a button to basically put that away or call it back. So it'll remember which superpower you called the last time and you can just do that again. But there are, you know, the sword has strengths and weaknesses. The glove has strengths and weaknesses. And I know there are other superpowers in the game. Um, like there's a dodge and a shield and that kind of stuff. So, um, basically use a combination of those superpowers to fight your way to victory. Um, but it's got a lot of high, high, high level of energy, um, and just it's just kind of crazy. I don't know how well it streamed. It didn't seem like it's really it hard was to follow. Bizarre as hell. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't know. That like, camera got away from you at one point. Yeah, it would like it was fighting like in the bottom right hand corner, and I couldn't even see what was going on. It's kind of it's got its quirks, um, but I I don't know. I feel like I feel like you know what you you're getting into if you watch any any part of this game. Like you're. You kind of accept that stuff. It's for a select group, select audience, I guess. Uh, but I was having fun with it. And what else are you going to play on your Wii U? Until new stuff starts coming out. Pikmin 3? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Wind Waker's out tomorrow. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. <laughs> was, uh, man, if this game had come out... This, if this game had come out in the spring, it would have been perfect. It just... It would have been... I don't know. Um, I think a lot more people would have played it. And that's kind of weird that... It's just going to be thrown into this clump of Wii U releases that are six months too late, um, and uh, but um, I don't know. Like I, I, I feel like if you have a Wii U, you're probably the audience that should probably give this game a try. <laughs> like if you've had one to this point, um, but um, it's uh, we'll, we'll see if I stick with it. But I had to give the game a shout out anyway. Um, games of the week from chat. Uh, Nelmar's been playing a lot of GTA V. Uh, Coop just finished up Sleeping Dogs, so that's got his vote over GTA. He did not answer me when I asked why he hadn't played Saints Row 4 yet, but he really loves <laughs> Sleeping Dogs and all the environmental kills in that game. And then uh, Verdean and the rest of the Horrible Night crew are busy, very, very busy on the Horrible Night Minecraft server. So they've got some pretty impressive... Um, projects going on in there uh horrible night highlights aaron what you got my highlight which i was surprised to see came uh this tuesday since there was no night force ethan put out an article that he titled ethan force hey. <laughs> which that part made me laugh enough that i'm like i'll check this out and i pretty much just also wanted to know what he what he did i guess surrounding his birthday his recent birthday and uh, it did answer the question of how he got so many new games. I, I believe you might have bought him some games for his birthday, Justin. I might have. He was. Uh, you might have. Yeah, I uh, went through his wish list. A passive, a passive aggressive attempt to get him to write no, more. No, not. <laughs> I wish I could say that's part of my plan, but I I went through his wish list, and he was it was, um, and I just wanted to do something nice for him. And then um, um, there were a couple sales of games that I knew he would. That I, I thought he might want to try, but I knew he'd never buy for himself. So, um, But yeah, he basically gave a rundown of everything he's tried lately, and it was kind of a nice fill-in for taking the night off of Night Force. Yeah, it was a, a nice read, and he even gave me a shout-out I wasn't expecting since I, I did stream Volgar the Viking on uh, Saturday, I believe. Yeah, I think we, and... should, we should all probably touch base on Volgar and Legend yeah. of Dungeon. Uh, maybe on a future yeah, we, episode of that show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the perfect place for it. Funny how that works. Cole, you and I aren't playing Minecraft, but you like the stream? I did. I watched um, quite a bit of it today while I was at work. Or actually, I didn't watch it. I listened to it, um, and I heard some Brian McKnight uh, <laughs> s singing from Ethan. Maybe some R. Kelly in there as well. He seemed to be having um, a good time. He was having a good time until all of a sudden the Justin gets online and the Minecraft stream goes down. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what was up with that. But no um, comment. Yeah, I'll never, I'll never watch that game. But it was actually fun to watch uh, it's, a friend playing it. It's it, more fun to watch for me than 
Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't, there's a lot of Minecraft streams out there, and we, I, you know, we haven't really dove, dove into those, but it was fun, it was fun to see that server kind of grow with, um, they've, like I said, they got a lot of interesting projects, and just, I don't know, just seeing what everybody's working on, and then, um, seeing them kind of come together to do stuff is, is, is really neat when you, when you know all the people, um, and, uh, especially when Ethan's, Ethan's a blast when he's having a good time on those streams, so. Um, Definitely. I bet. I, I would not be surprised to see a weekly Minecraft stream here for the near future um, because of that. And and then also shout out to uh, Jason. He's been posting uh, Let's Play videos of the progress on the uh, Horrible Night Minecraft server, so you can check that out on his YouTube channel. Uh, it's JP Tomps LP. Um, I have to give a shout out to, um, first of all, I put together a highlight reel. We had our 100th highlight uh, on the site from from our live streams, and I got to I cut a quick little video of uh, our most recent 50 highlights. Those are always fun to put together, um, boiling down basically 90 second videos to two or three second clips. And I don't know, they, it's kind of nonsensical, but also uh, pretty damn funny. Um, so you can check out that video. But in order to celebrate our 100th highlight, we decided to do a contest. Uh, this started this week on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to give away a $100 gift card to um, a random person that helps us vote for our for the best highlight uh, on our YouTube channel. So you can check out the contest link that's uh, in the Twitch info uh, below the video as well as it'll be highlighted on HorribleNight.com. But um, once we get enough entrance and enough views on that video, we will uh, announce a winner on an upcoming podcast. So good luck to those that entered. And uh, thanks for supporting our live streams. On to worst of the week. Let's let's actually start with the community here. Um, Nilmar's worst of the week is the fact that Grand Theft Auto V doesn't have no multiplayer right now. Uh, GTA Online is yet to come. Uh, are you missing some bros, Aaron? That part of the game seems like it could be really interesting. I believe it's supposed to launch on October 1st. So we'll get to see how that goes very soon. But yeah, it's it's maybe kind of a bummer that you can't do it to start. But someone on Twitter, I believe, made a good point that what if more games did this kind of thing that like maybe in the first week or two you could do, only do single player and then they launch multiplayer. Like, would more people play Call of Duty campaigns if they couldn't do multiplayer right away, or would sales be hurt? I thought that was kind of an interesting question. I don't know what the answer is, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, being locked out of stuff kind of sucks, but it's going to be there, so can't complain. Yeah, and I don't know. I was kind of thinking about it. I saw somebody post it, and it's, post it, and it's kind of dumb that, you know, if I got into GTA, I kind of just want to focus on the single player first. So knowing I'm not falling yeah. behind on the online uh, is actually kind of a bonus. Yeah. Uh, Coop's uh, worst of the week is the fact that he tried to do his Dark Souls stream this week, and the game would not launch. Um, lots of some sort of patch issue. Um, Dark Souls on the PC is can be a little bit sketchy, so hopefully that gets sorted out because he's kind of on a roll with that game. Yeah, and, he was. And then um, Verdian's worst of the week is just the mess of the free the games fun from the Ouya. Um, they they've at least <laughs> by the end of the week they they've tried to right the ship, but there's just a lot of shady. Um, business going on with basically they were attempting to match successful Kickstarters that wanted to be Ouya exclusives and um, there are just a lot of people that um, looking into the funding of some of these games that were winning it just there was some shady business going on behind the scenes and Ouya was not looking very good in uh, uh, how this was turning out but they've they've tried to right the ship but I don't know like uh, Ouya has really good intentions but they have just tripped on everything out uh, ever since their Kickstarter was a success, so it's too bad. Okay, uh, worst of the week. I'll, I'll I'll start us off. You guys got some, you got some deep shit. So, um, <laughs> I just I think this is half good and half bad. Uh, the great news is that Diablo three is ditching the auction house in 2014. Um, yes. That might be a little bit late, but the bummer is they're still gonna have the online requirement. And as someone who, basically his first month of Diablo 3 was kind of ruined, and I never really went back to it much after that because of the online requirements, um, it just it just seems silly because you know that the 
actually the the console version of Diablo three has gotten a lot of good commentary, and uh, so you know it's possible for them to not require the online require have the online requirement, uh, but they're still gonna stick with that. And I just I don't know. I think Blizzard needs to really realize what Diablo is, and they're still kind of uh, missing the point. Yeah, I was surprised that uh, I think I even joked weeks ago that like who is Diablo three on console is really for, mm. and then I tried the demo of the of the game and I was like, oh, I I have to eat my shoe or something because <laughs> it's this actually works and I'm not required to be online. There's no auction house like loot is dropping at a reasonable pace that things are remaining interesting even though I've played this game already. And you you can dodge. You can do a little dodge roll, and while that's not really significant to anything, and I was still getting hit while dodging away, it's just, I don't know, something's goofy about being able to just roll to <laughs> where you're going over and over again. And it was just kind of endearing to me. <laughs> I had a friend that say that, he's like, I'm going to buy the console version because, you know, I didn't really care for it on the PC, and I was like, I, I did not see this coming. I mean, hell, if you had local co-op bros for that, too, that'd be, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't fault anybody for that, but it's just, I don't know, like, Diablo 3 is just kind of the first big mess out of Blizzard, and, um, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm glad they're taking the auction house down, but I don't see the, the whole point of that auction house was what was requiring the, was making the on always online thing be required, and... So I don't know why you still keep the game online. It's it seems kind of minor, you know, this long after the release, but it's just I don't know. I I want them to fix that before the uh, expansion comes out. So, um, Cole, That'll what's your nice. what's your worst of the week? Um, as we've talked about, Aaron's playing Grand Theft Auto Five, and there was a lot of internet kerfuffle about, uh, especially Monday, um, Sunday night, Monday morning when. Reviews started hitting on on the all the popular gaming websites, um, and people were like freaking out. <laughs> um, if it didn't get a five or a ten, they were like talking shit about how the website was stupid, or or and vice versa too. Like there were both there were arguments on both sides of the coin. Um, it just seemed so freaking ridiculous that. You know, people are putting so much stock into review scores. We just got rid of ours uh, because, you know, people should go read the content of the review, not just say, oh, hey, um, Giant Bomb game, Grand Theft Auto 5, 5 out of 5 stars. But, um, I don't know, IGN gave it 80 out of 100. I don't know what they gave it. Um, I'm just making up some hot bullshit. But, <laughs> like, people were, like, going crazy over that. And it's like, not about the score. It's about what the content of the review is. The funniest and part... I think people just don't understand that. The funniest part, too, was that this was on the day before it was out. So all these people up in arms had no... They haven't played the game. and Exactly. And also just don't seem to realize that it just... It, that game's so big; it, these reviews don't matter at all. Like, it can't crush the game. I just don't understand the like the um, why people choose to like defend franchises like this. But it's just um, it's so misguided. And I, I don't know. I thought I was prepared for it. Like, you knew the m- reviews were coming, and the internet was going to explode. But there was just there was just something extra nasty about this. From you know, petitions starting to get the dude from GameSpot fired, or or. Or, and stuff like yeah. that. It's just like, I don't... That one was horrible. I mean, I just don't understand what reviews mean to these people. Like, and, you know, we had our separate conversation why we took uh, scores off of our reviews. And, you know, it's just... If if that reviewer doesn't speak to you, if you can't take any qualitative information from, from him, then, you know, move on. Like, it's, that's, it's just like an opinion, man. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's, it was it was yeah. it was kind of ba- it was really baffling. It yeah. it was a real just hot mess of like if a site gave it a seven out of ten, people were upset because it didn't score high enough. But if a site gave it like Polygon gave it a nine point five, and there were people upset that it lost half a point for and they, they're trying to determine what was the half a point lost. Yep. You know what deducted that, and they're like, was it was it the misogyny? Was it because you know it's a bunch of dudes and they're going around and they're all dicks and haha? 
You know, Dixon. I'm, like, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I'm like, is that really like that's someone's opinion, and that's fine. And I I play a little bit of the game myself, and I can definitely see where that complaint's coming from. But I mean, to sit down and just I guess if you don't have the game in your hands, what else are you going to do if you're an angry person on the internet? I guess just get mad about where that half a point go. It really is. It's just, I don't... I should be jaded to this to this point, but it's just every day waking up and like just wondering what's going to be <clears throat> the drama of the day in the industry. And it was just, everybody was sitting back and waiting for this that day. And, um, you know, maybe it's because this game, I mean... Made eight hundred million dollars in its first day. Sold that many copies. I do underestimate how many people play this game. So there are a lot more louder voices out there than usual. But damn, yeah. it's just uh, it's so it's it's just it's so frustrating to just um I don't know. It just I don't I don't really understand why people are you reading or you what they're using reviews for in these circumstances. So yeah, it's ugly. Um. Aaron, it's got some sad news uh, for your worst of the week. So the former Nintendo president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, passed away very recently. I don't I don't remember the articles now. It's, I'm just I saw that news today. News today, that's what I thought, and I saw that news and I was just like, wow, you know, I mean, I not like I've been following, you know, what he's been doing day to day, but it's just like really sad news just because you know, I feel like a lot of people of this generation grew up with Nintendos or Super Nintendos, and the company, while it might have its struggles today, you know, it was a real, you know, force to be reckoned with back then, and it's like one of the reasons why I like video gaming today, and he helped shape Nintendo down the path, you know, that led it to do some great things, and it's just kind of disappointing to know that, you know, he passed away, mm-hmm. and I think the the current president, you know, Iwata said some words about it, and I was just su- surprised to see that kind of news come up on, like, local news yeah. or kind of more, you know, nationwide news. Probably global people were talking about his passing. Yeah, I, I definitely, I found out about it um, just as I was kind of settling back into social media this morning, and just, but I, 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 found it in one of my non-gaming threads first. It was just by a, a friend of mine that doesn't have anything to do with gamings, and he was he was just like, wow, you know. Uh, but recognizing what he actually contributed to the industry and to Nintendo, taking them from, you know, the playing card maker to getting into video games and really pushing the NES uh, over here dur- during a very interesting time in video games, like um, after that, the video game crash. Uh, to to push a console to uh, to homes um, and the console that probably hooked all of us. So it's uh, yeah, uh, you know it's definitely sad passing. Big big uh, big deal. Yeah, like I guess he was one of the in Japan and he owned the Seattle Mariners. So his uh, his scope of what he had his fingers on was was pretty pretty wide. Uh, moving on to brighter news, uh, best of the week. Let's uh, take it to chat here and uh, start with Verdian. Um, uh, just calling out uh, Grand Theft Auto Five for making the eight hundred million dollars in one day. Um, hopefully, shows that the quality really pays for itself. But it might just because of the GTA name. I I think it is uh, the quality and that. <laughs> It might result in crappy sequels for popular titles, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean it overtook the the biggest first sales day in the industry, so that's uh, that's kind of a huge deal. Um, Coop finally made it to a new area in Borderlands thanks to FF forty five hundred in chat. Uh, they, I think they were playing. I think. A level 40 and a level 10 because Coop's tried to replay this game like four or five times and he finally got to a new area so uh, he's enjoying the game again so congrats Coop and then um, uh, Nil Mars is that he he's already beaten the Grand Theft Auto 5 story so <laughs> he's blowing he through that game through that. <laughs> 10 or 12 hours to get through the story so Crazy. and then um, let's see We'll start with Aaron. What's your best of the week? My best of the week, speaking of Dark Souls earlier, is that Dark Souls 2 has a release date of March 14th next year, 2014. 
and uh, that's that's Pi Day <laughs> for one thing. <laughs> and <laughs> I just realized that. Uh, but that gives me uh, a real reason to actually sit down with Dark Souls, which I tried to do this last weekend, thanks to watching Coop play last week, mm-hmm. uh, and actually finish this game because. As much as I like to praise and talk about Dark Souls or the Demon Souls as well, I never finished Demon Souls until Dark Souls was about to come out. I really forced myself to get through this hard game. Mm-hmm. And I kind of thought, oh, I'll probably do the same thing with Dark Souls. But now that I have that date, I know when I should start just really, you know, ignoring all these new releases. I can't refrain from buying and finish Dark Souls for good. I'm really curious to see how this game comes out. Like, a new kind of creative director saying they want to uh i'll just i'll be curious to see how which audience it goes after if it tries to reach a wider audience or goes even more hardcore but um that, there's yeah, a couple, that would be interesting i want to say you know, lords of shadow 2's release date is sometime next spring but these um you know the, the continued releases on the existing uh consoles is going to be <laughs> interesting next year so there's, a, there's a handful okay. of them um my best of the week is that there's been a grant um, to the Girl Scouts to help them introduce uh, girls to game development. Um, they've partnered with Dell to kind of boost their uh, journey and connect through technology program, which, um, I don't know, there's been a lot of uh, analysis of you know sexism in the, in the industry and in games in general, and... Um, and, and honestly, game development itself is a little bit of a boys club. So, uh, getting opening, opening up young girls to actually doing game development programming is a, is a very cool idea, and it was, it was neat to see um, Dell helping out with this and uh, identifying that. I know the the Boy Scouts also have some sort of merit badge now related to game development, but good to see this on the on the girls' side too. It's kind of kind of made me smile this week. That's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Cole. We're going to open up a Pandora's box here to convince uh, one Aaron McNeil uh, to make a a wise decision. Um, Well, I I already told you you're going to get it anyway. Whoops. I just looked up notes. (laughs) Uh, um, So he's going to get it anyway. But tomorrow, or midnight tonight, so in one hour, maybe for you guys. I don't know if they release like. Yeah, I don't know when it, what time it unlocks. Uh, Wind Waker HD Watch is going to be out for the Wii U. A 10 year old game is the best thing the Wii U has going for it right now. <laughs> um, Great so, start. <laughs> yeah. So, Aaron, you love Wind Waker. We were I do love Wind Waker. Earlier. Now it's prettier. So, and, and, and there's, and there's, you know, they cleaned up some mechanics. It's a little, a swifter in the boat swift, traveling section. Swift sail. Swift sail. So you should probably spend, what the game's like, what is it, 40 bucks? 50. You should probably spend 50, 50 bucks. You should probably yeah. spend 250 bucks to get this game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so I went ahead, I had a pre-order on New Egg for the bundle with the Wii U. I canceled it before the podcast started, and then shortly after the podcast began, I pre-ordered it again. So someone at Newegg's going to see my account and be like, what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> this guy cannot make up his fucking mind. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but you have to wait. You have to wait because that console doesn't come out until like when the retail oh, yeah. hits, right? Or does see, it this come is out the, tomorrow? The download yeah. release is out uh, this week. Oh, yeah. Which is really cool that they're doing that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for sure. And I, oh man, it was, it took me back this week reading reviews of that game. Like, it was like the anti-Grand Theft Auto coverage. Like, you know, I I found what I needed to out of the Grand Theft Auto reviews that uh, I was reading. But like, I don't know, just seeing people just enamored with Wind Waker again, especially with... There's no, there's no whimsy in Grand Theft Auto. No, no. (laughs) And the game (laughs) looks cool. It looks gorgeous. I I I can't wait to get it. Uh, there's I thought I would hold off, but yeah, I would. You know, here we are in 2013. Cole and I would rather play Wind Waker HD uh, than Grand Theft Auto Five. So <laughs> it's a charming game. I mean, it, Link Toon Link. He's so expressive in the face, and it's it's really great. I do have a question, Cole. Since earlier you said you played Wind Waker for the first time, uh, 
that Triforce hunt at the end of the game. I never got there. I got you didn't get I, there. No, I got about um, to the underwater castle, and then um, I had to move to Las Vegas and stop playing. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I really wanted to see what you had to say about that because that's pretty much that's the hang up for people. They changed yeah, that. Yeah, they changed. They changed it. They around. changed it a little bit. It removed some steps of that, but that's so funny that uh, I think back when I first played it, I. I remember thinking, you know, this is going on for a while, but that wasn't around the time where I was actually reading into reviews and what people thought. So it was like sometime later that everyone was like, ah, oh, you so you had to sail around and get all these pieces, and it was horrible, and I hated it. And I was like, whoa, I didn't feel that way. Yeah. But, you know. I never noticed that um, uh, playing it originally, but um, and and it I was had it out. Like there was just, I wanted to be so immersed in that game. I got, I really got into the sailing. Like I thought it was like relaxing and and. You know, it just kind of full of wonder. Like it just, I just totally bought into it. So um, I'll never forget the sailing music. It's like still in my head right now, just thinking of that game. So yeah, you should get a Wii U for that. It totally worked. Uh, Nintendo's plan worked all along on you. I'm gonna sleep outside tonight. Listen to these people that bought <laughs> Wii U's immediately after the release. We know what we're talking about. It's been a worthwhile investment at this point. I'm not. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I would have done it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, get out of here with a final question of the week. Um, I was just kind of looking looking forward to the next couple months, and just off the top of your heads, is there a game? What game are you looking forward to? Like, it, it, there aren't as many big releases as you'd think. Like the the whole new console launches have kind of cluttered things up a little bit, and I realized a lot of the games I'm excited for are like spring or later next year. Uh, but I do have an eye on a couple. I was curious what just stands out top of your head the rest of this year. I'm getting Pokemon. Are you really? I'm really. I'm gonna get the next Pokemon. When's the last? Was the last Pokemon you played? I got okay. So I played through Pokemon Black, uh, and I think that was around the time I had unemployment or whatever. So I finally sat down and like tore through that game, and I bought Black version two. Hmm. And not not too long after I got that, I lost it and couldn't find it, so I didn't get very far in it, and it was in my car the whole time. So I'm like, I'm just, I don't care anymore. X and Y are almost out. I'm gonna get that. But other than that, Watch Dogs yeah. might get my attention this year. I'd say Watch Dogs is my big one. Cole, what? Yeah, I was gonna say Watch Dogs too, and I think part of that, uh, part of me staying with Auto is because of Watch Dogs. Yeah. Just that open world, open worldness. You gotta, um, you gotta spread out your open worlds, man. Yeah. Looking forward to uh, Link to the Past 2, uh, the new Mario that's coming out for Wii U. Mario 3D World, yeah. Mario, Mario 3D World yeah. that's not 3D. <laughs> um, man, yeah. I got, like, I'm has, Watch Dogs coming out for PC, right? Yep. That's, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, I'm really conflicted on whether or not to get it for PC or PS4. Yep, that's kind of Because right now, like, I don't really have any... I don't really have any games that I really want for PS4 right now. Yep. Yeah, you guys got it. Obviously, I have all these, like, indie games, but... Yeah, I don't know. It just hit me. I was looking at October's releases and, you know, really just kind of waiting around for Watch Dogs. And then after that, um, I don't know. We'll see if I talk myself into... Yeah, uh, two, Ninten- two Nintendo games and Watch Dogs. That's, that's me. <laughs> Sounds weird. That does sound weird. <laughs> uh, I guess... Justin, mm. Assassin's Creed Four Mm-mm. is that a no for you? Absolutely, I turned I on that. So after... Turned on that franchise, and yeah, I also think it's bullshit that it's Assassin's Creed Four. But I think it. I think it's Assassin's Creed Three, colon Black Flag. I don't. I don't buy it. I, I feel that way too. I'm still gonna play it, but that's that's me. I do like pirates, and and some of that underwater stuff looks cool. But it's gonna, it's gonna have to floor some trusted uh, journalists. Uh, of my, of mine that uh, before I give that game another shot, especially like I'm, I'll be I'll be playing Watch Dogs, so um, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> balance out your your open world games. That's the lesson. Pick one and, and your Ubisoft games. Yes, yeah, pick one. All right, that's gonna do it for tonight's show. Chat, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for your answers, Aaron and Cole. Always a pleasure. And we'll be back again with another episode next week. We'll see ya. See it. About three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs>